I am so incredibly grateful to be here with you today. I loved what Andy said yesterday. This is our community, and I am so honored to be here, and I am so honored to be of service, and I am hopeful that you come away from my talk feeling like you learned something um, that I have to offer. I hope that I can be helpful in that way. So, I am uh, here to talk a little bit about my journey, but mostly to talk about art. And I'm here to talk about this idea of living life as art. And what that means for me is living with intention. So, as I said, I'm on the stage because I love art and I know art. And I'm not trying to get you to love art either. Um, I am often asked, like, why is that art? Like, I could do that, or I don't get it. And so I have a really simple idea of why something is art. So if the person who made it says it's art, then it's art, full stop. Super simple, right? Super helpful to know. And when I was younger and just starting my career, I had a really solid idea of what art was. It was like painting like this Rothko, okay? Um, but now I know that art can be food, um, art can be fashion, art can be landscaping, art can be your golf swing. The whole idea is if you do it with intention, then it can be art. And this is now what I'm talking about, this idea of living life as art, because it's living life with intention. And the reason that I love art is because even though I know it's not for everyone, I think it can be for anyone, and I think it can keep us company. I think it can keep us company. So this is a, a work of art that for a long time I used as kind of my mantra. And in fact, I was on a podcast with this guy, Rich Roll, and I said, this is my mantra, and I read it. I thought I had only read it once, and we were at family dinner, and my kids said, you swore like four times, and like 500,000 people have watched that clip of you. And, uh, and I was like, no, no, I only read it once. And they were like, nope. JP's like, nope. So anyway, four times. So I know Rand sort of wants me to read this, but I'm not sure if I want to. But anyway, it is in reverse language. It does say, pay attention, mother fuckers. <laughs> And for a long time, like, that was kind of my attitude. You know, I really wanted to, people to pay attention. I felt like they weren't paying attention. And um, I was kind of proselytizing about art and why it mattered. Um, but then I realized that this work is about much more for me. Uh, and I curated this exhibition that was called Zombies Pay Attention. And uh, that's what I want art to be able to do for people. I want people to be able to ask this question, you know, are you living? Like, are you just showing up or are you actually alive? And what does it mean to be alive? And I was so moved by Rick's talk yesterday and this idea of like what it feels like to fight for your life. So, so I have this idea that all works of art are self-portraits. They're self-portraits of the person who made them, but also the person that's looking at them. So when people say like, oh, I hate that, or that's ugly, or like, you know, something negative, that is also kind of the way we're approaching things. And we learn through Stegen, we all have a negativity bias. We have to work hard to have a positivity bias. And this work for me is very much about how I feel sometimes. He's coming up out of the garden. I love nature. He's got these snakes wrapped around his legs, you know, but that's his head. And so I think about this idea, you know, whose voice is in your head? Is it yours? Is it like your mom's, as Lily was saying yesterday, like who are you showing up for? Who's motivating you? That can be super positive, but it can also be really negative. And that's a question I think that's worth asking. You know, who's, who are you hearing? So for me, this work is very much about like fear. And, you know, fear comes from that idea of denial. Uh, and, you know, when you feel fear, where is it in your body? You know, is it in your eyes creating heat? Is it in your stomach feeling cold? Is it in your heart feeling anxious? JP and I, our hearts were beating so fast, you know, before we came out of here. Um, but then I, I really like to think about this idea of, you know, like, 
what, of what are you actually afraid? And I did this practice a couple years ago where I tried to do something every day that I was afraid of. And then the more I did it, the shorter that list got. And sometimes it was just a conversation. Sometimes it was something physical. Um, but again, this idea of, you know, what are you here to do? What are you called to do? So I really love this work also. And, you know, a, a, one of the Stegen quotes that I love is this idea that if you're looking for the face of God, look no further than in the eyes of the next person you meet. And so how are we relating to other people? Who is looking at us? What are we looking for? How do we see? And this is so beautiful with all of the glitter and like the intention and the perfection and the intensity. So do you see the eye of God? This is one of my favorite works that I have uh, to show. And it's asking questions about where in your life are you alive? Uh, what areas of your life are you just living and going through the motions? And how do you know the difference? So I really like this idea also, I love it actually, of uh, all those who wander are not lost. So when you look at this work, you know, is this a path or is this an oil spill? You know, here's another snake. Here's a bunny. I love bunnies. You know, here's a character, probably a woman, could be a man walking on this rainbow path. There are two figures up there looking into the abyss or contemplating where they're going next. The sky is filled with these birds and a coyote. We're cottywampling, right? Walking with purpose towards an unknown direction. But we have purpose, particularly if we ask ourselves what our purpose is. What are we here to do? So I love this work. And these figures, they're free to dance. They're doing like the body wave, right? You've seen it at like a car dealership or a car wash. Uh, and they're dancing, but they're also attached to these fans. So there's something that gives us a life force. There's something that motivates us. There's things that make us feel free and other things that make us feel bound and tied and constricted. So what are the pre-established motions that we're going through and where can we feel free? Where can we do the dance of life? So this work might look, again, like something super familiar and something that you might just kind of um, write off as uninteresting or banal, uh, but it comes out of art history. There are things that artists have been telling us for years, this idea of the three graces in Botticelli, Primavera, this is one of my favorite artworks of all time, or Matisse's The Dance. So we sit for family dinner every night that we can, we talk about two goods and a bad, that's a way that we continue to learn about each other and about the day and to feel, you know, who are we connected with? And then this idea of, you know, what turns you on? Like, what gets you up out of bed in the morning? Like, what are you into? Where can you feel free? Where can you feel like you're your best self? So a big part of life for me, my first journey, in the first time I went through the Dragon's Gap was about this idea of surrender. The opposite maybe of surrender was control. And um, so, you know, part of the gift of art for me is, you know, confronting this challenge of your life. And it's not what happens, but how you relate to it, right? So what is this art asking of you? And you can substitute the idea of the art asking of you to a challenge, a circumstance. What are the things that challenge you? You know, where are you finding that challenge? And this is a work by an artist named Huma Baba. It's on the uh, roof of the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. And one of the reasons I chose this image is because it's in context. It has the landscape. Our lives are in context. There's always something else happening. Environment matters. So. I moved from Aspen, Colorado to Orange County and 
That impacted my ability to surrender. Um, I really didn't know where I was going. I didn't know anyone there. And my whole life is, is better, honestly. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I walked away from everything that I knew and that I had and I thought was what defined me. And it's, it's so much better because I surrendered to the opportunity, the possibility of the unknown and also trusting that things would be okay. Things would be okay. So how do you surrender? What, what do you do? How do you find that? So there's, a, there's, I think, a moral imperative to be in relationship with life. You know, I think that's part of what we're talking about here at the reunion, this idea of development work and the, and the moral responsibility that comes with that. And life is all about relationships. Vid, at a couple reunions ago, he said that all you need to cross the universe is a hand to hold. And I have so much profound gratitude for JP and the fact that we found ourselves uh, in the Stegen program, in the leadership program, and in the Dragon's Gap the first time, and then doing the Dragon's Gap again, leading the couples cohort, the first one ever in Stegen. Um, and that was such an honor to serve in that way, uh, and to reflect on the introduction that JP gave to me today of being beloved and feeling what it feels like to be beloved. So, we, our lives, all of us, they're deeply intertwined and life envelops life. We, the me, it envelops the we. And it's like a really simple thing, right? Like the M just got inverted. So I do a lot of yoga and I love inversions. I love like standing on my head or doing a handstand because I love seeing the world literally upside down. It's such a simple act the inversion, but when you take something like a negative to a positive or you stand on your head, it just, it literally changes everything. And so when we step into relationship with our life, we also have the opportunity to be receptive, to be in the flow of the give and the receive. And so my question here is when do you feel most loved? What does it feel like to feel loved like that? So often modern art is representative, it's reflective, it's interpretive, it's simple portrait, it seems really straightforward, but it exudes symbolism as much as random shapes and colors. So this woman, seeing her image, it evokes emotions that may run the spectrum depending upon your emotions in observing her. Remember, all works of art are self-portraits of the viewer as well as the artist. This is made by a man, so it's not really his self-portrait, but it sort of is because it's his wife. So, but her ambu the ambiguity of how she's presented, it allows you to have your own thoughts and feelings about her and what she sees in you and how your emotions might change over time. So part of that is also, for me, this idea of the aspect of surrender. You know, I was getting ready to come on stage and I was like, is my outfit okay? Is my hair okay? Different things that we ask ourselves, things that seem important at the time, but probably aren't. And, you know, what do we get caught up in? And I love that Rand has talked a couple times already about this idea of beauty. Beauty is so important. And in the art world, you know, where I've spent my career for a long time, people are like, oh no, beauty's bad. What the hell? Beauty's awesome. <laughs> Right? Who doesn't want beauty? Who doesn't want truth? Who doesn't want goodness? So, I love this idea. Where do you find beauty? And connects back with that idea, too, of finding God as well. You know, how do we find it? Where does it speak to us? So, I think when I have found surrender, it's not, for me, a passive thing. It's a really active thing, and it's filled with exuberance. So what does it look like to fully extend, to reach the highest heights, to give yourself to all that surrounds you? I believe that what you receive is directly correlated to what you put out. That's what I'm here offering you guys today. And when I have given everything, 
when I've put everything into myself and my family, into the world, I feel fulfilled. I feel grateful. I feel like I've been of service. And on a day when I wake up and I don't feel my best, I always ask, like, how can I help? What can I do? And I love what Rick said yesterday, like, don't ask, just do. Don't ask, what can I do? Just, just do it. So I love this question, when are you most you? How do you feel most yourself? And what does that feel like? I'm so grateful we started today with a meditation practice that was really helpful to me. I uh, have a committed meditation practice. It's how I, like the girl in the video, quiet my mind as best I can. It doesn't always work, but I do it every day no matter what. Um, and this is kind of my new mantra. Um, so from pay attention, motherfuckers, to everything is gonna be all right. Everything is gonna be all right. And here they're juxtaposed. And, and I do believe, you know, what we tell ourselves, it matters. The words that we tell ourselves matter. And so this is, this is my offering to you today that art can keep you company. That you, me, all of us, we have the opportunity to live with intention. And when we live with intention, we can live life as art. And I think that that would be a really worthwhile endeavor. So I'm stepping into the opportunity to be in relationship with that notion of being of service, of being a pencil in the hand of God who is writing the most joyous and beautiful life that can be offered to me, for me, through me, in service of something so much greater. So what I think is if we can pay attention that everything is going to be all right or even better. Thank you. <laughs>